All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I'm coming with the preview for this upcoming preseason game against the Kansas City Chiefs on Saturday at 4 p.m. This time, instead of 1 p.m., of course, I will be live streaming during that entire game, breaking down everything that I see, and of course, talking to y'all in the chat. So definitely make sure y'all pull up for that live stream. But y'all already know how this goes with the preseason previews. I'm going to give y'all 10 important players or specific things to really watch for. It can be an entire position group. It can be a specific player for a specific reason. All of that. Of course, when we get to the regular season, it's going to more so be like a five matchups, three X factors, and one score prediction thing that I do as a preview before every game where I focus more so on, okay, who are the best players on the other team and what do we have to focus on to stop those specific guys and who are our guys on our side that need to step up to neutralize their biggest strengths and to attack their biggest weaknesses. But this is the preseason. We're here to evaluate players. We're here to see who deserves to be on this team, who deserves how much playing time, who deserves to be a full-time starter who needs to get more reps targets carries than other guys and we're mostly here to see who can contribute and how much so we're going to focus on 10 people position groups or specific things that we need to focus on while i'm live streaming during this game and also if you end up watching it again watching the film on it or the replay these are like the 10 things that you really need to focus on and put a microscope on to because there's a lot of things we really need to evaluate i mean really top to bottom all 86 players currently on the team but there are 10 specific things that we really need to keep an eye on that are truly going to affect how this season goes and future seasons for the washington commanders so without further ado before we get into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure y'all pull up every friday to the broadcast podcast live stream where we talk about anything funny that's going on anything sports entertainment music anime gaming anything that's funny or needs to be talked about we talk about it and then also of course make sure you pull up every sunday for the call in live stream where y'all call in you voice your opinions positive or negative about the commanders or if you have any questions make sure you call in the show is for y'all without further ado let's get it All right, so number one, and this is in no particular order as far as like importance go or priority, but number one has to be, will Jahan Dotson finally be targeted and show that he's the real deal? I mean, this man has been making play after play all off season. Now, granted, since training camp, it hasn't been as often because you have Terry McLaurin, you have Curtis Samuel finally in the fold. You have a lot of other factors included to where Carson Wentz is spreading the ball around a little bit more. But in OTAs and mini camps, he looked like we had a another Terry McLaurin and he still does but again we just haven't been able to really see what he can do consistently because there's just so many other targets so even in training camp he's had touchdowns and he I think he had like two touchdowns yesterday in practice which is really good but in that preseason game against the Panthers he was out there just as many snaps as Carson Wentz was and he was the only other receiver that was out there for all 22 snaps that Carson Wentz and the starters were out there for and yet didn't receive a single catch was technically not even targeted and so i want to see against this kansas city chiefs no matter how long the starters are out there whether it's one quarter again or if it's hopefully a half but i doubt it with all of the injuries that we're dealing with especially at guard and tight end but I hope that whatever time the starters are out there, Jahan Dotson finally gets some looks. Because again, it's really interesting that he had the least catches out of him, Curtis Samuel, Terry McLaurin, and even tight end Armani Rogers, who I'm a big fan of. And he was out there in the game more than those guys, even more than Terry McLaurin. And he was open quite a bit of it. If you go back and look at that game, he was running really good routes and could have easily have had several catches, but it just didn't come his way. And so hopefully Carson Wentz, even if they got to kind of force it, because it's a preseason game. I want to see Jahan Dotson get some catches and, and really light it up against the Chiefs. Please give my boy some more targets, man. Please. I want to see him. Now, granted, there's an element of you kind of want to hide him, kind of like we did with Terry McLaurin his rookie season, where we pretty much shut him down for the preseason. We haven't shut Jahan Dotson down, but maybe they're purposely not giving him a whole bunch of targets because they don't want to expose him to the rest of the NFL to game plan for. I feel like that's an element as to why Cole Turner has missed so much time. 
I feel like if we had a game that we had to win tomorrow, Cole Turner's probably healthy enough to play, but they're being overly cautious with injuries just first of all because you don't want to risk it in a preseason game that doesn't count for wins or losses. But also, I think they're trying to hide those guys, including Jahan Dawson, who's out there playing, so that other teams don't know about these secret weapons we got. Maybe that's just fantasy and something I'm just coming up with out of nowhere, but who knows? It's still really weird to me that we have not seen Jahan Dawson explode onto the scene yet. But this Kansas City Chiefs game may be a good opportunity to do so and get him started. And then number two, the guy that got to get it to him, Carson Wentz, and we've already seen that he can be the game manager. He already proved quite a people wrong, showing that he can actually take the layups and take all of the smart plays and basically run an offense. That, that game against the Panthers was literally like an Alex Smith ran offense. And even I was shocked that he could run an offense like that without making a whole bunch of mistakes, getting the ball out quickly, dumping it off to the running backs like Brian Robinson had two catches, taking the safer options more times than not. That hasn't normally been his play style, but at the same time, we brought Carson Wentz here to take advantage of the entire field and other than that underthrown deep ball to Terry McLaurin he didn't really even attempt to take any explosive plays so I want to see this game if he's going to give us some explosive plays I want to see more attempts and of course I want to see more successful throws because again we only had one attempt and it didn't work so I want to see some explosive plays I want to see some 40 yard bombs like we've been seeing all throughout practice this week I mean he's been dotting up in practice including today which I'm going to talk about of course when I break down the August 18th Thursday's training camp day practice all week literally ever since after that Saturday night practice at FedEx Field where he was super on and off highs and lows terrible misses but also really good highlights ever since then he's been far more consistent with a couple of lows and hasn't had a bad practice since but he's had a couple of bad periods but overall he's been really consistent far more consistent than I expected at this point but I still need to see some of those explosive plays we brought him here with the crazy arm to be able to attack deep down the field with all of these speedsters that we have our top four receivers arguably top five if you include Dax Milne possibly being over Cam Sims on the roster or shifty fast smaller guys that additionally pose as deep threats as well and so we brought in a quarterback that could take advantage of that but we just haven't seen it in a preseason game yet we've seen it all throughout practice again like I've already said but I want to see it unleashed against the Chiefs especially because I'm pretty sure the Chiefs are going to try to do the same thing against us then number three can Antonio Gibson hold on to the ball and his job that's obvious i feel like that's a very obvious one that everybody should have seen before you even clicked on this video can antonio gibson hold on to the ball because if he fumbles again it's going to be really ugly i mean i don't think he's at risk of getting cut i don't even think he's at risk of getting traded but the more he fumbles the less he'll get the ball for sure and he's gonna have to work his way back up we've already seen him getting special team snaps in like i've already talked about in several videos i'm not going to dive into it in this video if you want to go find out a, my real detailed thoughts on why Antonio Gibson's taking special teams reps you can definitely go check out my breakdown of training camp from yesterday day 17 August 17th but in general I think it's a mix of Ron Rivera sending a message and also we just don't really have any great returners standing out right now and technically Antonio Gibson talent wise is one of our best returners potentially on the team and so it'd be really interesting to see if he could actually become our primary punt returner at this point but at the end of the day man if you can't hold on to the ball what can we do with you because say even if it's punt returns or kick returns if he fumbles then so you gotta figure that out and Ron Rivera said in his press conference after the Panthers game, like immediately after, was that a lot of his fumbles come from him trying to do too much moving east and west rather than just hitting the hole as hard as he can and falling down. And so I feel like it's a lot of mental stuff. I don't think it's anything physical, honestly. He's one of the most talented guys on our roster, especially athleticism wise. I think we can get that 80 yard screen pass against the Buffalo Bills week two last year out of him quite consistently. I think he can literally be another Alvin Kamara, but we'll never know that if you can't hold on to to the ball number four who was our best returner which kind of branches off from the previous point that if you really think about it and again I break this down in further detail in my day 17 training camp breakdown but if you really think about it Alex Erickson and Dax Milne have not impressed at all and honestly if health weren't a factor Antonio Gibson Jahan Dotson and Curtis Samuel are easily potentially our best punt returners over those other guys but with Antonio Gibson and especially Curtis Samuel and even Jahan Dotson even as a rookie you worry about putting them back there in those situations and increasing their chances of getting hurt and then now you lose an important weapon on offense but with 
with Brian Robinson looking as good as he did and with Antonio Gibson fumbling, maybe it opens up the doors to where they're like, all right, Gibson, between you, Alex Erickson, and Dax Milne, you easily have the best potential at returning. But you haven't done it since college and you keep fumbling. So we got to see, man, this punt returner job is wide open right now. It determines whether some guys make the roster or not. Like, if Alex Erickson cannot contribute as a punt returner, he definitely doesn't make the roster. At best, he makes practice squad. And if Antonio Gibson, again, who has a way higher ceiling than Alex Erickson returner-wise, if Gibson can go out there and show that he can be a safe option as well, a dependable guy, a smart returner, the athleticism is an extra at the end of the day. Being an explosive punt returner is great, but at the end of the day, we just need you not to muff punts and to make smart decisions, fair catching when you need to, and making sure you put us in good solid field position in every time if you can give us some explosion on top of that that's wonderful and gibson definitely has far more explosion in them than an alex erickson or a dax mill and hopefully we get to see some of that against the chiefs i want to see gibson return some punts and some kicks i'm not gonna lie number five can curtis samuel handle back-to-back -back weeks of live full contact game action I mean, he hasn't been ramped down since that Saturday preseason game against the Panthers. He's been a full participant all week through training camp, which I'm a little bit surprised about. But that does make me very optimistic about how healthy and explosive and how important he'll be to this offense moving forward. It sounds like he's good to go. I don't think there'll be another ramp down. Now, granted, he may be on somewhat of a pitch count against the Panthers, like a lot of starters are reportedly going to be, like starting center Chase Roulier and a few of those guys. But it looks like he's ready to just keep going out there and performing and doing what he does best. I mean, a couple of days ago in practice, Scott Turner had him getting the ball out of the backfield making plays as a receiver in the slot from the outside he was all over the place like we thought Curtis Samuel would be and even in that Panthers preseason game he was going in motion a lot to basically show Carson Wentz or is the defense and man coverage or zone coverage he's that guy to also confuse defenses keep them on their toes they don't know if he's just a distraction or if he's actually moving to go get the ball so Curtis Samuel is a really important part to this offense that's why we really need him also with as much money as he's getting paid we'd also need him to contribute for that reason alone and again his health Health concerns are starting to go away, especially if he puts together back-to-back -back weeks of preseason games. Granted, it's not full games. It's not a whole four quarters, but back-to-back -back weeks of being able to participate in preseason games with the starters like a starter and fully participating in training camp practices in between with barely any days off. The only days off he's gotten is the days off that everybody has gotten, like everybody didn't practice on Sunday and probably won't practice either Friday or Saturday. And if he shows me something, if he looks explosive and he's able to take contact and take hits and bounce right back up like nothing happens, I'm definitely starting to become way less worried about his injury situation, but it's definitely something to watch against these Kansas City Chiefs. Number six, can the backup O-line hang with the starters, man? We are down quite bad offensive line wise i mean charles leno is not even practicing today and then you had cornelius lucas starting at right tackle yesterday and samuel cosme had to move to right guard because we're down all of our guards trey turner andrew norwell and west Schweitzer are all banged up in some type of way now granted again i'm gonna keep saying this if we had to play the super bowl tomorrow and it was a must win game I feel like a lot of these guys probably would be playing, but we're being overly cautious. So I think it's really interesting to see, first of all, what the starting O-line is even going to be, because I'm assuming Tyler Larson's just center. Samuel Cosme, I don't know if he, just like in practice yesterday, if he's going to start at right guard against the Kansas City Chiefs and Cornelius Lucas start at right tackle, I'm not sure. But either way, the fact that we have so many backups as starters, that means when we go to the twos, we have a lot of third stringers. And then when we go to the third stringers, we have a lot of fourth stringers that are more than likely not even going to make the team type of situation so i'm really interested in seeing how our old lines handle going against the higher defensive lines according to depth chart again it's going to be a lot of second stringers out there with the first stringers from the kansas city chiefs it's going to be a lot of third stringers out there with the second string kansas city chiefs d-line so i'm really interested in seeing how those guys hang with those guys and if they look like they're up to the task that means we have a lot of great o-line depth but it's still we prefer to have the starters on the offensive line obviously but i'm really interested in seeing how these depth guys work again we're gonna have a lot of backups starting like maybe three or four of them against the kansas city chiefs with the starters out there like while pat mahomes is out there when we come back on offense with carson wentz we may have four backups on the offensive line blocking for Carson Wentz against Chris Jones and 
Frank Clark, and all these other good defensive linemen that the Kansas City Chiefs have. The number seven, man, this tight end room. Speaking of guards being hurt, this tight end room is extremely thin. And I want to know who's going to step up and make plays because Curtis Hodges had the mispractice yesterday, so he's a little banged up. We already know Cole Turner's dealing with his hamstring injury, and he's supposed to be out for like the next 10 days or something like that a week or two and then you have John Bates still dealing with his injury he practices on and off and he may not even play in this Kansas City Chiefs game and of course Logan Thomas is on the pup list and then Samus Reyes just got placed on IR literally the only two I guess somewhat fully healthy tight ends that can even participate in practice are Armani Rogers and Eli Wolf as of yesterday. Now, I don't know if Curtis Hodges has practiced today yet. I still got to go check out all of the information for what's going on in that situation, what happened today in practice as in August 18th, Thursday. But even so, even with Curtis Hodges, that's only three tight ends available to go against these Kansas City Chiefs in this preseason game as starters, backups, all of it. I mean, the only information I do know is that we're so thin on tight end that we have Nathan Gary, the linebacker that we just signed, ex-Philadelphia Eagles linebacker, substituting in as a tight end at times for the offense in practice today. That's how thin we are. And Eli Wolf, I don't even expect him to make the team at all. And right now, he's tight end too, behind Armani Rogers, who's an undrafted free agent. Y'all know I'm really high on Armani Rogers, and I really hope he paves a way to make this team. But that's crazy that that's literally our tight end group right now. Undrafted free agent Armani Rogers has never played a game in the NFL. Eli Wolf, who's clearly not making the team. And then Nathan Gary, a linebacker. I don't think he's ever played tight end before in his life, has he? So I feel sorry for Sam Howell, because who is he going to have to throw to by the time the third string is out there? But again, without thin, the tight end room is Armani Rogers. This is your moment. Eli Wolf, I don't feel like there's any serious competition at all. And of course, Nathan Gary is no serious competition at tight end. So this is your moment to step up. You showed something in that preseason game against the Panthers with Carson Wentz targeting you constantly. And I'm just expecting you to build on that further. And even if Curtis Hodges is healthy enough to play, I'm still expecting Armani Rodgers to step up in the absence of all of those other tight ends and show what he can do and make them keep him. Find a way. Find another roster spot. Take one away from another position group because it's like we got to keep this Armani Rodgers guy. He's too much of a difference maker. Time to step up. Number eight. Is there any amount of excellence from Sam Howell that can propel him to be the direct backup quarterback before the regular season starts? I highly doubt it. But who knows? What if Taylor Heineke goes out there and looks terrible these last two preseason games and Sam Howell looks like a future Hall of Famer? It's possible. It's very unlikely, very, very unlikely because Taylor Heineke is pretty much firm in the backup position spot for the quarterback. But at the same time, when Sam Howell is in the game, outside of Carson Wentz you don't have to change the offense that much he has a strong enough arm to continue running a very similar offense to what Carson Wentz is running under Scott Turner but Taylor Heineke you pretty much got to throw away 30 percent of the playbook immediately after Taylor Heineke comes into the game it limits us in so many different ways defenses know it as well they stack the box they play everything underneath and it's harder for us to run the ball I mean it's just a really bad domino effect that takes a hold of this offense and we become crippled when Taylor Heineke enters the game game again I like Taylor Heineke and I will forever cherish what he did against the Falcons the team I hate the most in the NFL but at the end of the day he limits our offense and there's a reason we're so excited about Sam Howell but again to my point is there anything Sam Howell can even do specifically in this preseason game against the Chiefs to even make Rivera and, and Scott Turner and the guys even think about propelling him up to being the second string quarterback to direct back up to Carson Wentz again highly unlikely but is there even a chance again if he goes out there and looks like the next Drew Brees or something with Wills, I feel like it's going to be hard to deny him the direct backup QB position. But even in that amazing performance against the Panthers, he did make quite a bit of rookie mistakes. You could clearly tell he was a quarterback taken out of the first round in this past draft class. You can tell it was his first preseason game in the NFL ever with a few rookie mistakes that he made that even Taylor Heineke doesn't make. But again, if he goes out there and plays even better against the Chiefs, we got to at least think about it. The number nine, can the starters improve in third down defense against Wave? 
against a way better offense than the Chiefs. I mean, our third down defense looked like that against a Baker Mayfield-led Panthers. He just got there, not even a whole couple of months ago. Just got traded there, what, like a month ago, maybe? And he was out there doing that to our starting defense, specifically on third downs. So there's no way. We just can't allow that. Again, Baker Mayfield, I think he does get a little bit too much hate, especially from last year with all of the injuries that he was fighting through. But at the end of the day, man, he's not Pat Mahomes in the Kansas City Chiefs offense, man. He's not. Especially Especially with the Kansas City Chiefs. So granted, they lost Tyreek Hill, but they added Sky Moore, who I've been hearing has been balling in training camp so far, and Juju Smith-Schuster. It's not like that offense is really going to take that much of a step back. Again, Pat Mahomes is still their quarterback, and I'm pretty sure Pat Mahomes with the starters is probably going to play for at least a little while against our starting defense, and we got to see if we can fix this third down defense situation, but it's going to be really interesting because like I'm trying to emphasize, this is a better offense we're going against. Can we fix our third down defense problems against a better offense? and the Kansas City Chiefs versus what they struggled with against the Panthers last week. And this has been such a long-term problem that we've been dealing with for at least a year now, and I'm really sick of it personally. Like, we got to fix that. The soft coverages on third and short, third and medium makes no sense. Why if they only need six yards or our DBs eight yards and further back? Like, I just don't understand it, Jack DeRio. And then it's also execution too because that one touchdown and zone coverage with Kendall Fuller, supposedly zone is a strong suit, and he got beat beat by a ball thrown behind them and it's just like come on now scheme and execution we need better from everybody jack DeRio and the players and then lastly 10 can jamin davis build on his good panthers game moments and a great week of practice and finally show that he's worthy of that first round pick because it's quite slept on but he has some really good moments against the run specifically against the Panthers and we like never really saw that from him last year even as high as I am on Jamin Davis's good moments even from last year they were rare but he shined at times last year especially in coverage but we never really saw him do anything significant in the run game but in that Panthers game he had two really good moments against the run if you go back and actually really look at the tape and then this week in practice you can argue he had his best week of practice since he's been drafted to the burgundy and gold this past week he's been looking really good coverage run stopping everything even had an interception and so can he build on that panthers preseason game and this week of training camp practices and carry that into the chiefs game and look like he was worthy of that first round pick i'm really interested in seeing it i mean as we saw from the terrible coverage from david mayo there's no competition between jamin davis and david mayo for who's going to get the most playing time we just clearly saw that against the chiefs first of all the fact that jamin davis was out there with the starters the whole time and david mayo didn't come in until the second stringers and then the fact that he was struggling that bad against the second stringers lets you know everything that you need to know so that conversation is dead jamin davis is clearly the starter with cole holcomb is going to play at least 90 something percent of the snaps for sure but at the same time how effective is he going to be while he's on the field He's just one of those guys that we kind of forget is even on the field at times. He just doesn't really pop. He doesn't make these crazy splash plays. And granted, it's kind of good in a certain way to not hear your name called again at linebacker because that means you're also not making mistakes because we clearly noticed David Mayo out there for the wrong reasons. But at the same time, you're a first round pick. You're a freak athlete. I'm expecting you to blow up some plays and be the sole reason why the Kansas City Chiefs and other future opponents just can't move the ball, either in coverage, run defense, whatever. I'm expecting to see you pop on the screen and so i want to see if he can do a lot of that and again carry a lot of that momentum from the panthers game and this week of practice into that kansas city chiefs game and moving forward into the regular season and all of that man but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please leave a like if you liked it if you learned anything and as always man i appreciate all the support man shout out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now again this is a preseason edition of my preview videos so is different from the regular season like i already explained and make sure y'all pull up to the live stream for this kansas city chiefs preseason game i will be live streaming throughout the entire preseason game breaking down everything and of course we're gonna laugh and we're specifically and we're specifically going to focus on these 10 things from my list as well so make sure y'all pull up for that and i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out